Okay, and welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we have a really cool review for you from the brand Crafter Blue. Now, you guys, if you're fans of the channel, you know I've reviewed quite a few Crafter Blue products. Normally, they are these great rubber straps. In this case, it's a watch. I did review another one of their watches in the past, and this is an extension of that. Now, a little bit about the brand. Crafter Blue was founded out of Hong Kong back in 2015. Uh, they make aftermarket professional grade rubber dive straps and now offer full on wrist watches. Now this particular type of watch is a dive watch. Some common uh, key common characteristics and design language you're looking for a diver. Of course, you're gonna want that water resistance. Typically with some, some type of screw down crown, you're gonna want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelets. Um, this particular model is the Hyperion Ocean Chronograph, and this is the limited colorway, uh, but essentially the Hyperion Ocean Chrono features a 42 uh, millimeter body built with quality stainless steel encasing the high-end Seiko NE86 chronograph movement. Um, it embodies harmony of both advanced technologies and com contemporary style. Now that's one of their little blurbs uh, if you go to their site, um, but I think they're pretty, you know, they, they hit the mark with it. Now in terms of the price on this, you can get it for one uh, $1,199 direct, and that is the, with the same package that you're gonna see here, that is with the, the um, rubber dive strap and the stainless steel bracelet combination. And I think that is the way to go because it's not that much to mark it up, and honestly, it's always good to kind of have both options, and uh, knowing Crafter Blue is also knowing that that strap is going to be insane. But I am a bracelet guy, so we'll start on the bracelet, we'll work our way to the strap, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. All right, guys, whew, check that out. Focus, wow, okay. I love the colorways, number one. I'm a big fan of white dials, but the choice of the kind of bluish gray tone uh, combined with the orange tones. I mean, it's a great, great look. Another item that just jumps out at me before we even get into the details, check out that crown, uh, I'm sorry, that crown, that bezel. It is fantastic. It really reminds me of my Monta Ocean King and it has a very, ooh, the action is fantastic. And normally, I'm not gushing over the action on a chronograph bezel, but this is a chrono diver. So I get to gush about it. Holy smokes, that is nice. So really beautifully done from that perspective. Actually, it's so nice that I, I don't want to do it a disservice by um, having you guys see all the fingerprints I just left on it. So very nice from that perspective. The bracelet does have a nice fitment there, as you can see. It does have a male end link, so it does extend the case, but lucky for me, it's not the only strap that I have. Uh, this bracelet is uh, actually a three link style. It is a single link there um, in a Y shape and then they just kind of mill it. I will say they did go through the trouble of milling the back to make it appear as if it's a full three link. It's not. Also the pins on here are pretty standard push pins. So nothing special there, but you are getting a milled and signed clasp, a very standard affair uh, with some manual micro adjust holes. Um, so, you know, and I will also say that the clasp is very sturdy and very, very solid. Honestly, you've probably seen these types of clasps, uh, you know, on infinite other watches, even just aftermarket uh, bracelets. But I will say there's always a fine line. Some of them can be very loose. This one feels very nice and tight at some very high tolerances. So normally I would uh, kind of cut away to get something on wrist, but we'll do that for the, um, the rubber. So what I'll do right now, for those of you bracelet lovers like myself, let's just get it on the wrist real quick and check it. Wow. Digging that. So bracelet perspective, very nice guys. 
uh, fits well, but there's really nothing special about this bracelet. Uh, it does have, you know, very basic two millimeter taper, so down from 20 to 18, but let's face it, guys, Crafter Blue's known for these guys right here. All right, they're known for rubber straps, beautiful, natural, vulcanized rubber straps and look you can see there's even contouring here to make sure that there's air that is going to be there and room for things to drain um, you can see that it does have some really nice um, texturing done there nicely signed i mean when i first saw these i thought they were combination straps like this might have been a nylon but it was just how finely executed the texturing was on here. So with all that said, let's actually do a little bit of magic here and uh, get these uh, swapped out. Okay guys, check that out. Now this is the way this watch was meant to be worn. Look at that. So although before you had the male end links, now you have this. So uh, while you didn't get a diver's extension, Getting it on this strap, I mean, it just opens up the doorway because now you'll have all this extra length here for you to put it over a dive suit should you ever need to. But look at this, look at the fitment there, guys. Also one thing to note, they use legit spring bars in here. Holy smokes, there's like straight up like the level, I mean, this, even the spring bars were nice. Like they honestly were similar to the ones that you'll find like in brands like Monta. Oh yes, yes, Monta or Rolex. Um, so they used the very nice thicker spring bars. Um, also with on the tips of the spring bars, they were rounded edges versus it being that sharp edge. So, um, you know, protects from scratching when you're installing, uh, which is great. So. With that said, um, the movement inside of here is a Seiko automatic um, NE86. Now, essentially the difference between the 86 and the 88 is gonna be just the deletion of that 12 hour counter. So instead you're getting the 30 minutes um, and then you still have the running seconds. Let's actually unscrew these. Uh, one thing to note, Check that out, the little color coding I think is great. The orange collar there. And then once the orange is gone, you know you're good to go. Once the black is gone from this collar, you know you're good to go. So we'll go ahead and get it going. Ooh, very nice guys. So if you have handled these Japanese Sego Instruments movements, um, they do have 45 hours of power reserve. They have a four hertz sweep and uh, they do have column wheel and vertical clutch systems. Uh, one of the benefits of a column wheel and a vertical clutch, very crisp actuation. It's not mushy or smushy. There's no jumping. It's very, very precise and almost like too smooth. Like it's in comparison to, and I mean, I really enjoy 7750 movements, you know, there's Valjou, the Swiss Valjou movement, but this is just, holy smokes, that's butter. That is absolute butter. Um, so very nice from that standpoint, I'll let this run so while I run my mouth um, and talk to you guys a little bit about this dial. So it does have a nice matte white dial with these nicely raised indices. You have the date at six o'clock there, as you can see in the negative uh, window. So you're gonna have a black uh, disc with a white font, uh, which I think is a nice little standout feature. And, and I think it adds a little bit of balance to the dial as well. Um, you're getting all this multicolored loom. So we're probably wondering, hey, what parts of this are loomed and aren't? Because there's like, orange and black like there's a lot of different colors on there and white um so we'll see when we get to the low light and loom transition um but uh to finish this out here guys we'll go ahead and clock it screw these back down this has 200 meters of water resistance. Um, so those of you who were thinking this thing was gonna be like 600 or 1,000 because it's thick, guys, it's thick because of the movement. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's why it's it's pretty thick. But I will say, 
that's still a nice profile. Check that out. There's a nice curvature to that mid case. This little um, kind of extension that comes out here helps break down the mid case even more. And it also helps break down the case back so it doesn't appear as large. So I will say there was definitely some homework done from that perspective because this, although it is a little bit thicker, guys, it's 16.9 it's millimeters thick, so almost 17 millimeters. But it's also a diving chronograph. Guys, find me dry, diver chronographs that are thin. They, they're just not there because they have to have chronograph movement, typically thicker. Um, and then they're also going to have to have water resistance. Also adds thickness. So, um, yeah, this is, it's it makes sense. It's by design. This isn't like... It's not thick and chunky for just for the sake of thick and chunky. It has to be a certain size so that you can read um, the information that's being captured on the dial. It's a certain thickness because you have to be able to fit the modules in there. And it's also, you have to have water resistance and have strong seals and everything like that. So very nice from that perspective. And it just fits with the theme. Again, this rubber is fantastic vulcanized. Um, and it has also two millimeter taper, uh, but let's go ahead, get this on the wrist and see how it wears. All right, guys, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this wears fantastic. Even up close with some lens distortion, it still doesn't overhang or overshoot. But when you have it away from the lens there, you can see that it still centers really quite nice on the wrist. And even from a height perspective, it wears its thickness well and does have a few tricks up its sleeve that do help it appear visually thinner. So good on Crafter Blue for that. And of course, this strap is amazing, guys. I love, this is where it's gonna stay, which is tough for me because I'm such a bracelet guy, but man, this strap's fantastic. Also, look at the hardware here. Very nicely done, all milled out. Um, even has screw in uh, tang buckle there, if you can see. Very, very nice. So this is where they really excelled um, is on this strap versus I feel like the bracelet was more of, hey, you kind of have to have a bracelet option to a certain extent. So if you're not going to spend, uh, you know, if you're not looking, trying to spend more and save, I will say that the uh, rubber strap is the way to go from this perspective. But it is always nice to have. Uh, <laughs> a metal bracelet so it's tough um this they both work um but this for me adds value versus the um you know the uh, metal strap is more of a check in a box hey the options there it's available for those of you that don't do this that don't roll like this but man this thing is so gorgeous i just don't see any need to wear it any other way but uh, let's go ahead, get it back off the wrist, set up some low light uh, transition, loom shots, and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Wow, as you can see, very surprising loom. Like I wasn't even expecting that bezel to be fully loomed for across all the index. Um, so very cool. I like the multi-color aesthetic. You're getting dark blues, you're getting bright blues, you're getting a couple of greens in there. Let me actually find my black light, give it a little shot here, just to have it play a little bit and you can get an idea of where areas are loomed and where areas are not. Oh, the black light really makes that orange jump out. Very cool. Uh, so very, wow, very nice. Um, yeah, again, okay, it's not a huge loom beast, uh, but it is a dive watch and it has loom and it does a good job of it. But, you know, I don't think anybody's going to buy this specifically because it's loom. I think you're going to be buying it for the movement and everything that comes with it. Uh, but one thing I do like to work in while we do the loom shots is working some low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of times you're going to be coming in and out of buildings walking underneath overhangs maybe underneath the shade of a tree or just spending time in your favorite automobile so it's nice to see what these watches look like in less than perfect lighting conditions so my hot studio lights do a really good job 
of kind of impersonating direct sunlight, but you're not, yeah, you're not always going to get that. Sometimes you're going to be even in harsher conditions uh, with high contrast lighting as you're seeing here, which typically would expose any type of imperfection, which I'm not finding, uh, which is great. I will say that um, the site doesn't really list what material the bezel insert is. I'm gonna guess that if it was ceramic, they would have said that. So for me, I'm thinking it's a coated steel bezel. Um, the brushing on it is quite fine, as you can see. It does remind me of my SBDC 101 or SBB 143, depending on where you're gonna read your nomenclature, and whether it be international uh, availability or JDM. But um, I will say that it does look really great. I was really surprised to see uh, the loom action. I'm gonna do that again. Maybe do a little two-way loom here. Get some regular light mixed with some loom, some black light, so it makes it a little fun. Look at that, that is a good look. That's a good looking watch. And uh, you also get to see how the colors render. You see the kind of grayish blue tones, seeing those oranges, that matte white. You're seeing the brushing uh, around that bezel insert there. Very, very handsome. And of course the color play that ties in uh, also to the pushers themselves. So now let's get down to business guys. Closing thoughts on the wrist, it feels very substantial. Honestly, while remaining purpose-built, um, it's a diving chronograph. They tend to be on the thicker side by nature. Uh, so while slightly top-heavy, it honestly still feels natural for the watch. It doesn't feel off balance. It doesn't feel like it's biting off more than it can chew. It feels like it's a watch on a mission and it's ready to accomplish that mission. In terms of uh, model variations, you can get the standard black dial variation um, in terms of comparable models. Honestly, there's a lot of Seiko powered chronographs. Um, you know, with, you would say even within this kind of price range, um, these movements have also though made it into some very expensive time pieces. Um, you know, uh, some very exclusive Japanese brands have used these movements and those watches are, gosh, trading much higher now. Um, but they also have some that have Miyota movements that are trading ridiculously high. So um, this is a fantastic movement. It's nothing to, to sneeze at by any means. Um, although you might find them in some more affordable watches as well. Even if they are, they're in the most expensive watch that that company probably sells. <laughs> so we, I'm not mad at that. Uh, these are cool movements, they're great. Honestly, for you to get one of these movements in a Seiko, I mean, it's gonna be like triple the cost at the start. So um, this is, a, I think, a really nice little deal. I think it's aesthetically very, very handsome. I dig the case shape, the beveling. It definitely has kind of this sea master, planet ocean, kind of vibe going on with the way that the lugs are twisted. Um, but everywhere else, honestly, just feels very natural and very organic. Uh, so for me, guys, bottom line, this one really hits the spot. And I think that's what makes me enjoy it so much is that it just fits and hits. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do hit like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Thank you.